Hello everybody and welcome to a tutorial on advanced machinery. This is an add-on that's done by iEmotionless. It's on his uh, Vantage website. There's a link down in the description and a little description from the website about what this add-on does. It, it offers a bunch of different machines and whatnot. So I thought I would do some tutorials. I've been playing it quite a bit and uh, I'm actually uh, playing it on a flat world. Uh, along with some other mods too, but uh, Advanced Machinery is one of the mods I'm using. And uh, so I thought I would go over a little bit of some of the automation that I've been doing in there. And the first thing I thought about uh, doing was the lava generation automation for uh, for generating RF. I, I really think this is kind of one of the best early game uh, It's, it's not as cheap as some of the, there's like the water wheel, which I think is probably a little bit cheaper, but this actually produces more RF per uh, generator per, I won't say tick because it's not really per tick, it's per whatever this, you know, whenever this thing shoots its little beams across there. But as you can see, I've got uh, 19,000 RF already out of a hundred, so it's not bad. And it's relatively inexpensive. I mean, this thing is going to take you a little bit to get because it's red, two, four redstone blocks and some iron blocks. And uh, yeah, it's it's a bit to get going. But, you know, once you once you get it all set up, um, then it's, uh, oh, you know what, let me, uh, Let me go in creative here. I need to get a crafting table. There we go. Because I will show you the recipes on this. It's, like I said, it's relatively, relatively cheap to, uh, to get started on it. There we go. So, uh, let's do all and if you scroll down to the bottom down here uh, of course let's look at the power core first now this would be something this would be something you do after you get the power core so I mean it's not the power core isn't terrible because all this stuff can be uh, you can generate this stuff pretty easily by using the sifter and just sifting gravel and you know one one diamond i thought it was a diamond block it's actually just one diamond so i think he changed the recipe on that but anyways a diamond iron and the redstone so that's really not all that bad so once you get that and of course that's you have to have that first because this is what stores all your energy the power core it's what it's what um all the machines that you want to do stuff with is going to use so you have to have that first and so once you get that then let's go down here to the bottom and then we can build the the, the setup here so for example the the stone barrel which is what's going to produce our lava it's uh it's only uh cobblestone that's not bad the cobblestone generator itself really isn't that bad either i mean it's just cobblestone the lava, which you get from your stone barrel, and then water. Now, water you would get from a wooden barrel. You put leaves in your water, leaves in your wooden barrel, and you'll get a, a water. You'll get a, a bucket of water. So, the cobble generator is is really fairly inexpensive. The lava generator, again, that's not that bad. You're going to get the copper from uh, from sifting, and of course the redstone from sifting again. You can get the lava, your lava bucket from uh, from your stone barrel here. And then the glass, when you have a hammer, if you hammer the cobblestone, you'll get gravel. When you hammer the gravel, you'll get sand. And of course, you just, just you can just cook the sand. Um, you can obviously you can make a, a, a furnace and just cook it in, in that as well. So that's where the glass comes from. Now the magenta glazed is is your 
conveyor belt. This is what's going to move your items around. There isn't any sort of pipe system. So instead we use conveyors. And the little arrows show you which way the conveyor goes. And, and again, it's only, you get six of them for three iron. So that's not really bad. And of course the bucket, you know what a bucket is. That's really basically it. It's a really good, I think, it's a really good early game power source, very consistent power source. It's it's one of those that will automatically generate the RF. You don't have to, you know, there's uh, uh, different types of generators down here. There's like a combustion generator. That's relatively inexpensive, but it takes coal. And, you know, you'd have to, you know, work up a little system to get you the coal in there. And it's not as easily automated as the lava is. So the coal is a little bit, I mean, it, it's, it's another, uh, another uh, way to do it. But as you can see, the lava generator produces more RF anyways. Then, the, you know, this, the combustion generator would be good if you wanted to use a manual system, but you might as well automate it because it really isn't that expensive to do so. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So, yeah. So, and, and these are all the different items that you have in the advanced machinery. A lot of cool stuff here. Uh, here's your water wheel that I was talking about, and that's relatively inexpensive, and that's just passive. You just put it down, but it only produces two RF. So it's uh, the other thing is your solar generator. So that's a little bit more expensive, actually. Um, maybe individually, it's it's okay compared to you got to do all this, uh, but again, you're only getting four RF, whereas the lava generator uh, produces thirty RF. So I think it's a good, it's going to take you a little bit to get to get the resources to do it, but honestly, not that much at all. Really not much at all. So let me just show you real quick how to build it. It's super, super simple. I mean, let's take a look at it. Now, I've got three of them set up here, but you could start with just one lava generator and then, you know, get another one and put it on there and another one and put it on there. And you can put it, you can extend this out as long, as much as you want. And then these are your barrels here over on this side. It's cobblestone generator. As you can see, it's real simple. The cobblestone generator generates cobble, pops up here, and then it gets moved forward. And if one of these barrels is empty, then it will, the cobble will drop down in there. And over a period of time, it'll generate lava. And so when the bucket passes over those those uh, stone barrels, it'll pick up the lava. And as it passes over these, um, as it passes over these lava generators, it'll deposit the lava inside of them. Now I've got the glass around here too high because when the, when the bucket picks up the lava, it really bounces high in the sky. <laughs> so you want to, you want to cover it up so that it, uh, so that you don't lose it. Uh, but anyways, we'll, we'll build it real quick. It's just, I mean, honestly, you can obviously tell how it works by, by just looking there, but we'll go ahead and build it one here real quick. So I start with my lava generator. Now you notice that I got these on the side. I don't have them in the corners. I don't really have anything in the corners. You could probably put stone barrels in the corners if you really wanted to. Uh, I found that the lava generators don't work very well in the corners because it, it sometimes the bucket won't put the won't put the lava down in there if it's on the corner for some reason. So I've got them in line and, and I just mirrored that on the other side with the stone uh, barrels. So this one's already producing. Yeah, now this, the, the lava generator takes RF. So I'll show you here in a minute. You know, I've already got energy in there, so it's not a problem, but when you first start, you're not going to have any energy for this. So you'll have to prime one of the lava generators, which is what this lava bucket here is for. So from there, I just, I've, I've got three stone barrels and then I put a piece of glass. You can put whatever there, another stone barrel even will work just fine. Then I put another piece of glass there. And then here's my lava generator. So one, two, three. Now, like I said, you can just, you start with one and then, uh, you know, 
once you get more resources, then, you know, you can get a second one and a third one, and you can extend this, actually extend this out as far as you want. Okay, so now we want to follow the arrows here. So if you put it down like this, as you see, the arrow is pointing this way. That's what we want. So put another one there, and it'll follow the arrows. The, the, the items will follow the arrows. So now here we're going to turn the corner. So we want to put it this way, right? And then here we're going to turn the corner, so we want to put it that way. And then there, there, there. And then again, we're going to turn the corner, so we're going to put it that way. Now, as you can see, if we watch the... See, it goes until it finds an empty, empty barrel and just drops down in there. So the next thing we need to do is just put this up too high. And you're going to need it too high, otherwise the, the bucket's going to uh, pop out of the system. And we don't want that. And I use glass just so you can see inside of it. Now the tricky part of this is making sure you get your arrows going in the right direction. Because I've sometimes I've done this when I was building that one over there, I actually had the arrow pointing forward so it would go up here and stop so you got to make sure that all of the arrows you know the arrows are pointing in a circular direction now like i said if this is the first time you're setting it up you're not going to have any power so your cobble generator isn't going to work so what you'll need to do is prime one of these pumps like so and then that'll get it that'll get you generating some rf and then at this point, all you do is you just throw a bucket down in there, like that. Notice it picked up the lava, and boom, it puts it in the in the lava drainer. Picked up some more lava, and it should put it in this one right here. There you go. And it'll just do that forever. It'll just keep going. And so it's a self-perpetuating uh, system. And now the, these power cores, they have a 30 block radius or 60 blocks uh area so as long as this is within the 30 block radius then it's it'll work just fine and as you can see we're already up to 46,000 rf so yeah so really really simple simple uh setup it it, it works really well i mean it'll just chug right along you don't have to mess with it or you don't have to grow any trees. You don't have to, uh, that's why I think this is really such a good early game. It's not expensive. Everything is easily uh, manufactured, it easily retrieved from the sieve. The, the, um, the sieve will Trying to see around my microphone here. Uh, there we go. So you just get your get your gravel and start sieving, and you may have to sieve for a little bit. But as you can see, you get a bunch of resources. That's assuming you're on a skyblock type of type of world. If you're in your own, if you're in your own world. You just go mining and, and get the stuff, but as you can see, you get the you get the different uh, nuggets, which you then convert over into your ingots, like so. Now he also has a uh, a mod that you can add to this. That's a compatible mod, and that's called ore trees. And the ore trees, like it sounds, you make different ore trees. You can make a coal ore tree or a iron ore tree, and that works really well with this with this. Uh, add-on as well but it kind of goes hand in hand with it so it's a nice way to generate resources as well but there you have it folks it is a early game rf source for your 
for your power core over there. Very simple system, completely automatic once you get it set up. It's extensible, you know, if you if you want to add more of these here, you just, you know, you just extend this down this way. Add more of the uh, conveyor belts to it and you're good to go. You know, more the stone barrels are really cheap. Just add more of those. That's why I like it the way I had it set up this way. You just on this end of it, you can just extend it down as far as you want to go. As long as it's within the 30 block radius of the power core, because that's the extent here. But 30 blocks, that's pretty good. That's going to get you a lot of a lot of lava generation going there. So so there you have it. I'm going to be doing more tutorials on this uh, add-on. I really enjoy this add-on for Bedrock Edition. It's really very nice. Uh, check out uh, the Vantage website. There's a link in the description to this mod pack, but he's got other stuff. He's also got a bunch of worlds that he's created. Uh, for example, he's got a sky factory type of thing, ocean factory. He's got a stone factory. So yeah, there's a bunch of different sky block type stuff that includes not only this mod, but a whole bunch of other uh, add-ons as well to kind of help you with the experience. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely worth checking out and I'm, I'm really enjoying this one. So I'll do, I'm going to do more tutorials on this particular mod here. And uh, because I just I, I really like it and I like the autom the way you can automate things and get it set up. So it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's we're, we're getting mods on on Bedrock Edition and it's really exciting. It really is. Uh, we've had mods on Java Edition forever, but we're finally getting them on Bedrock Edition now. And it's just it's just really nice to to be able to to have uh, have those mods. You can see how that bucket just flies up in the air. That's why you need to have it too high, because otherwise your bucket's going to fly out of there. So anyways, guys, so look for the next tutorial. Um, not sure what I'll do it on, but I'll, I'll figure out something. So I appreciate you watching. And if you have any suggestions or any tutorials that you want to see, let me know. And I will talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye now.